This is Skybees. It's a uh, fairly new 1.16 Skyblock mod pack, a uh, questing mod pack. We do have a, uh, a quest book here. The default key for that is uh, the grave key. You can also utilize the quest book here that we are given right at the start. And it actually has quite a lot of mods. I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect jumping into uh, a 1.16 mod pack, but there are a surprising number of mods that have been ported over uh, to 1.16 at this point. Things like storage drawers, immersive engineering, bees, which we will get into. Uh, we have power, Batania, industrial foregoing, astral sorcery, blood magic, extended crafting, both refined storage and applied logistics, as well as mechanism RF tools, flux networks, and a few more on the way down here as well. So quite a comprehensive list. And there are, of course, also uh, other mods that don't have their own quest line that are also included in JI here. But uh, this is a pretty interesting pack in that it starts like a typical skyblock would start you start with x nihilo you know you punch a tree get some wood and do kind of all of the typical x nihilo things get some crooks get some sieves and all of that jazz if you've seen previous packs but then instead of just rolling with that and trying to automate sifting to generate massive amounts of resources you instead pivot over into a new mod for 1.16 and that mod is resource bees this one right here and it also correlates with that uh, this quest line and essentially you can use these new bees to generate resources not to be confused with forestry bees forestry is not in the pack has not been updated uh, these are uh, new bees utilizing the new kind of like bee texture for 1.16 like there are now actual bees in minecraft which to those of you who've been playing uh you know vanilla minecraft for a while is not news but uh, to those of us playing modern minecraft we've kind of just jumped over from uh, 1.12 and so a lot of the stuff is new for example uh, we're going to go ahead and plant some trees here and um, one thing that always surprises me is the new like sh shifting animation Somebody asked in the Twitch chat, what is the goal of the mod pack? And I guess the goal of the mod pack is to complete the quest book here. One of the things that really drew me to this mod pack uh, over some of the other skyblocks available for 1.16 is that this mod pack does have some kind of altered progression. That being that you do have to go through some of the mods in the pack to get to other mods. I think it does mention in like this first starting quest here, by the way, these are all just uh, tick box quests that give you a little bit of information about the pack we're gonna go ahead and just click most of these here but i think this one right here gives you the general outline of where the progression goes for example you have to go through ex nihilo before you can get into batania you have to go through batania before you can get into the power mod and you have to go through batania as well to get into industrial foregoing and you have to do things like astral sorcery before you can get into blood magic and uh, if we look for example at mechanism there are recipe changes that make it a little bit more tricky to get things like the steel casing here you have to have gone into blood magic and you'll probably have to get some kind of automated uh, you know blood altar in place to be able to actually get these machine frames if you want to get into mechanism in a big way so to start with you we're of course going to plant down more trees um we do have the uh the mod installed that allows us to shift and shifting kind of accelerates the rate at which the trees grow i think the mod's called tree growing simulator but it might be a different mod here in uh, in 1.16 uh, we also have FTB Ultimine. You'll see if I hold down my Ultimine key. And by the way, if you go to Options, Control, and type in uh, Ultimine, you can set this to whatever key you want it to be. Uh, mine is set to a button on my mouse. But if you hold it down, uh, you'll see it kind of highlights all of the blocks of the same type that are connected to each other. And if you go ahead and break one of those blocks while holding down that button, it will break all of those blocks. We can break all of the wood at once and harvest the entire tree, which is super nice. Another thing here that is actually super nifty and we will go ahead, of course, and get a crafting table. We'll also make a crafting station, which is essentially a crafting table that you can leave your items in. So I can put the wood in here and just leave it. It'll still be in there when I come back, which is very nice indeed. But one of the nice things about this pack is that uh, right out of the gate, we're actually on a pretty big block here of dirt. And so what we can do is we can utilize FTB Ultimine here to basically mine out all of the dirt. And then uh, if we just very quickly get some wood here to build our way back up we then have the ability to put down basically a ton of saplings so getting wood early on in this pack really doesn't seem like it's going to be all too difficult for us if for example we go ahead and just build out a bit of a platform here to collect all of the uh, the saplings and whatnot that are about to drop what we should be able to do if we want to rapidly get a large amount of wood which i definitely think is going to be a good idea for us is that we can kind of just throw all of these down like so we can then maybe build out a little bit because if we are too close to the trees they do kind of uh, push us down to the ground which is less than ideal it is the middle of the night which means these might take a little longer to grow but if we just press shift a bunch we then get just a ton of trees so once we have all of this here what we can do 
And uh, this would definitely be easier if I could get to my crafting station. We can craft up some sticks. And then from those sticks, we can make some crooks. And I think we are kind of getting into the, uh, the first quest line here. Yeah, we only get 32 logs, but uh, you'll see there is a quest here for wooden crooks. And for a crafting table, we can remake that stuff in just a second. But uh, essentially, for those unaware, the crook gives you more saplings when you break leaves with it. And of course, much like with uh, our fists and the axe we're about to make, we can hold down the ultimate key and we can break a bunch of leaves at once, thus getting a bunch of saplings all at the same time. And on top of that, we do also get these silkworms here, which are going to come in very useful in just a second to get string, which we can then use to make our string mesh. So right out of the gate there, we got 57 saplings, which is very nice indeed. And then of course we can go and chop down all the wood and that should in turn complete the quest there for 32 logs. We got uh, over a stack of wood there. Uh, and of course we can do that over and over and over again, really as many times as we like. Uh, just to complete the quest here, I will go and make another crafting table. I'll also go ahead and uh, remake another crook here. The crook definitely not going to go to waste. We're going to use that on the next batch of trees. We then also have a quest here to make a barrel. Uh, you can use any barrel for the quest. However, right now, the only barrel that we can make is the uh, wooden barrel from Ex Nihilo, this one right here. And this can be used for a few things. If it's raining, I do believe that this will collect water. And that is actually extremely useful for us because having water early on, I think is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. So I'm actually going to make at least one more barrel here because we do want to get, obviously, at least two buckets worth of water so that we can look at making an unlimited water source. And the game is kind enough to give you a clay bucket right out of the gate. You can't use this to pick up water until it's been smelted. But if you smelt that into a regular bucket from the ceramics mod, we can then use that to move uh, these two buckets of water here into an actual usable unlimited water source, which is super nice. Uh, also, by the way, I do have Optifine installed and I have rain turned off, which is why you can't see the rain. Uh, if I go and turn this on here, you'll see the rain uh, is falling. I just think it looks a little nicer uh, to not have that on, uh, but that's why the buckets there are filling up despite it not looking like it's raining. Unfortunately, that does make it a little bit trickier for us to, uh, to know when it's raining, and that makes these barrels a little trickier as well, because, uh, for example, uh, we would also like to use a barrel to make dirt. And so uh, if you don't want uh, water to get into your barrel, you can do this and uh, just cover the top of that barrel. At that point, obviously, the barrel beneath it won't fill up with, uh, with any water, which uh, in this case is exactly what we are after. Because now what we can do is we can place things into the barrel to make dirt. Uh, if we look at the recipe here for dirt, uh, you can see that in a barrel, you can put in a bunch of different stuff. You can put in string. You'll see it says amount 40 out of 1,000. That means it would take quite a bit of string, more than 10 string, in order to make one dirt. We can also use saplings, which is probably what we're going to go with. Uh, each sapling does 125 out of 1,000 right at the bottom there, uh, which means it's going to take eight saplings in order to make one piece of dirt here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And unlike previous versions of Ex Nihilo, this is actually very fast. Like it actually turns the saplings into dirt very quickly. And so getting more dirt for us here is actually not going to be too difficult. So the next thing that I think we need to do is get another set of trees going. Because now, if we look in the quest book, the next quest down here, and the next quest that we do have to complete before we can get up to the sieve, is the quest for string. And as it mentions in the quest book, we can use a silkworm on the leaves and then wait for infested leaves to appear. At that point, if we crook the infested leaves, uh, we're going to get a nice large amount of string. Uh, just to make my life easier, I'm going to build a little bit of a larger platform here. Uh, once we've got a slightly larger platform, we can once again shift nice and quickly here to get a bunch of trees. But then this time around, we're going to put the silkworm into the tree. Now, technically, you only have to put one silkworm into one leaf. And you'll see at the top there, the progress is slowly going up. Once that gets to 100%, it will become an infested leaf and it will spread that infestation to other leaves, which will in turn start that progress. And then when they get to 100%, they'll spread. And very quickly, the whole area here will become infected. Um, however, if you do put a couple in, of course, you can expedite that process because, you know, more infected leaves are spreading to more other leaves and you kind of, uh, you know, speed up the whole process of getting a full tree worth of infected leaves. Someone in the Twitch chat does make a good point. You can eat the silkworms. I don't think you can eat them on their own, but if you cook them, they do become a meal, a very bad meal, <laughs> but uh, a meal nonetheless. So once all of the leaves are infested, we can once again hold down our Ultimine key and break all of these. And you'll see now that we're getting a bunch of silkworms and a bunch of string. We can do a few things here. 
we can complete the quest and make a string mesh, which we're going to use for our sieve in just a second here. We can also craft up some wool, which in turn is of course going to allow us to make a regular bed if we want to uh, skip the night uh, or get rid of rain in the future. For now, we'll just throw that down right about there. And we can also use the string, of course, in the barrels here to get more dirt if we want as well. All right, let's eat some uh, bread here. Our hunger is getting a little low. I'm also gonna make a uh, regular chest here. We'll go and make a double chest, why not? And our island is getting a little cramped. I might actually build kind of a bit more out this way. We do have builders ones in the pack, which are not called builders ones, I don't think, uh, in 1.16, they are called construction ones. Um, unless the first construction wand is a stone construction wand, so we are gonna have to get at least one cobblestone before we can make that wand. Uh, but thankfully that first cobblestone really shouldn't be too far away. Now, if we're going to get a large amount of cobblestone, we're going to want to get some kind of cobblestone generator. And I do believe in the quest book here, they even have a lovely image. Yeah, with the crafting table uh, showing you the regular cobblestone generator that you can build in a skyblock with water and lava. We have the water, of course, we just need the lava. So the other way you get cobblestone is by sifting dirt. So if we run dirt through a regular sieve with the string mesh that we just made, we can get these stone pebbles. From there, we can then craft those stone pebbles into cobblestone that we can then use uh, to make lava. So let's go ahead and throw down, well, actually, I guess, first of all, let's make a sieve. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let's throw this down for now. I guess like right about here, we can then place, again for now, our string mesh into that sieve. And then if we go and take some of our dirt, we can hold down right click to begin sifting that dirt. Now, one interesting part about these sieves from uh, Ex Nihilo Sequentia, which is the 1.16 version or 1.16 port of Ex Nihilo, is that these sieves currently do not have any kind of speed protection which means you can sift with these sieves as fast as you can right click. And so if you do something like this, you can actually sift very, very quickly. So I have a macro on my keyboard that allows me to right click very, very quickly. And uh, there are no stops in place uh, to prevent that from happening. So you can actually sift very quickly, which in terms of this mod pack is actually quite nice because I think we are going to be doing a fairly large amount of sifting. Uh, so being able to do it quickly is, uh, is very nice indeed. And you'll see as a result there, we did get quite a few seeds and we also got 35 stone pebbles, which we can then go ahead and craft up into a cobblestone, which of course is the perfect amount to go ahead and make a regular old furnace like so. And what we can do at this point is we can craft up one of these guys right here, the wooden crucible. Now, I'm a little confused at this point because the uh, the wooden crucible is fairly easy to make. And in previous versions of X and Hello, the wooden crucible was used to make water. You would put it down and you would put things like saplings into the wooden crucible and it would turn that uh, those saplings into water. However, in this version of the pack, the wooden crucible also requires a heat source, which it didn't use though. Uh, so I will go ahead and start cooking up a piece of charcoal here but you can also make lava in the wooden crucible. But at the same time, there is also a quest to make the fired crucible down here. This is kind of the traditional crucible that you would use to make lava. And this one's much more expensive. It requires seven porcelain clay, which is made with bone meal and clay, neither of which we have just yet. Bone meal, uh, we can obviously get from skeletons if we try and spawn them. And uh, clay we could get from dust, which we can, we'll get to in a second here. But um, it seems to be a lot easier. And I don't know if it's intentional or not, but uh, it does seem to be a lot easier just to throw down a wooden crucible with a torch under it and use that to make lava. So let's take you, let's make a uh, batch of torches. And essentially all you do is you put down the torch, you put down the wooden crucible, and then you can either put saplings or cobblestone into here. Uh, if you put, it doesn't have to be saplings, you can also do like leaves and uh, string might work as well. But uh, you can put certain things in the crucible to make water. Uh, it might even tell us in J.I. here, it does indeed. Uh, you can put in leaves or samplings. Uh, you can also, however, put in cobblestone. Now, there are a few, hmm, okay. It's interesting, it doesn't mention cobblestone here as, as making lava, but it does work. It also shows all of the other heat sources that you can use in order to heat up the, uh, the crucible. Uh, the torch is by far the worst at 1x here, but uh, at this moment in time, I think it's really all that we have. So all we need to do now is we need to get enough dirt to make four cobblestone, which we should be able to do fairly easily with our barrels here. Now that we have a furnace, I can throw the clay bucket in there. We can get an actual bucket, uh, thus allowing us to clear out 
these two uh, two barrels here. And at that point, I feel like I might as well also go ahead and make a unlimited water source, which for now we can put uh, back here, I guess. Definitely a little bit of a janky setup and one that will be, you know, rectified in the future. But for now, we should be able to take our water and just do something like that. Oh, like that. And that gives us an unlimited water source that we can use however we like going forward. And of course, now we can uh, temporarily get rid of the, the old oak slab here and we can begin filling this, uh, filling these up either with uh, samplings or with string and producing a large amount of dirt. So I'm not quite sure on the exact amount of dirt we're going to need to get four cobblestone here, but I don't think it's going to be uh, too many. In fact, that should be enough right there. It is. So if we put one, two, three, four cobblestone into this wooden crucible here, you'll see at the top, it says uh, solid cobblestone 992. And underneath that, it says fluid lava 10, 11, 12, etc. And so very slowly but surely, this cobblestone here is going to be turned into lava. Once that cobblestone has turned into lava, uh, we can then utilize that lava uh, in conjunction with our water here to produce a cobblestone generator. At that point, uh, we can look at getting large amounts of cobblestone, and ideally, we can look at turning that cobblestone into gravel, sand, and dust. To do that, uh, we do need a hammer, and there is a quest here to make a hammer. Thankfully, uh, we can make a hammer, and uh, we do have many, many stacks of, of silkworms here that I do need to get rid of. My inventory is way too full. But if we do something like this and like this, we can get our very first wooden hammer. And this can be used to turn cobble into gravel. If we put down the cobblestone and break it with a hammer, it turns into gravel. If we then place down the gravel and break it with a hammer, it turns into sand. And if we put down the sand and break it with a hammer, it turns into dust. And if you're looking to make clay, what we can do is we can put a bucket of water into the wooden barrel. You can then right click the dust onto the wooden barrel and the dust combines with the water to make clay that we can then craft down. And if we wanted to, we could use with bone meal to make something like the fired crucible. Um, although at this moment in time, I don't really see a need to make the fired crucible. We might do it just because there's a quest there, but it doesn't really seem too useful. So I think at this point, while we wait for the lava to come in here, which is going to take a little while, um, I think we should probably look at, uh, at two things, I guess. One, we do need to sift some more dirt so we can get some ancient spores here, thus allowing us to make witch water. But uh, we also do, of course, have to get into uh, the namesake of the mod pack here, and that is, of course, bees. Uh, there is a quest to make a beehive frame. It's fairly easy. It is eight sticks and one string, both of which we should have. I am going to make two of these because I have looked ahead a little bit here, and the next quest does want us to make a beehive, and to make that, we actually need three. So the two that I've made here are still not enough. But if we do something like this and like this, we can get our third beehive frame. And then from there, I think we are going to need a little bit more in the way of wooden planks, but we should be able to make an actual beehive. Nice. And in doing so, I believe that we have unlocked the beeline quest. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually think we can get into bees until we get the witch water, because the way that we actually get our first bee is by crafting this buzzing doll and then right-clicking the buzzing doll onto one of the, uh, the barrels to my left here that is filled with witch water. So we need to sift some dirt, get some ancient spores, use those ancient spores on dirt to create mycelium, and then if you put a barrel full of water, one of these barrels full of water, on top of mycelium, that barrel will be transformed into witch water. We can then right-click a buzzing doll onto that barrel full of witch water, and that will spawn in a regular Minecraft bee. At that point, we can begin looking at farming those bees, you know, housing them, breeding them, all that kind of jazz. Uh, and then from there, look at getting other bees are going to allow us to produce basically all of the resources in the game. Nether quartz, redstone, ender pearls, emeralds, gas tears, the whole nine. There's a whole, everything you can think of. Bees can do it. Someone in the Twitch chat does mention that we can use four apples to make more apples. So I think what we can do here is we can craft four apples together to get an apple sprout. And this is apple growing on a leaf. Can I plant this or do I have to put this onto a leaf? Let's have a look here. If I grow a regular tree, can I then place this here? I can. Now, can I do this? Oh, I can. So you can make that grow. And I'm assuming that once it's fully grown, I'll be able to harvest an apple. Yeah. Oh, and you get the actual sprout back as well. Oh, okay. That's actually extremely useful. 
because at that point we can turn basically all of our apples here into these uh, these apple sprouts. We can uh, shift nearby to uh, to grow all of them at once. And once they're all grown, we can then vein mine the bunch. And look at that, we turned 17 apples into 23 apples, and we still have 10 apple sprouts there. So we can essentially replicate our, uh, our apple sprouts, uh, oh, essentially replicate our apples there indefinitely, which is super nice. So a little while later, we're almost there on the lava, and we have 20 dirt, which we've acquired from all the saplings uh, that we've gotten, and we also have a good amount of, uh, of wood here as well. Uh, by the way, middle mouse click, if you want to auto-organize an inventory, like I just did there, you can also do it with your regular inventory as well, very useful for, uh, for chests and whatnot. But uh, over here, we're gonna go ahead and sift all of that, and that's of course going to get us a nice amount of stone pebbles. We also do get things like uh, andesite, granite, and diorite that we can use as well. Unfortunately, however, despite uh, all 20 there, we did not get any ancient spores. What are the odds on ancient spores? You have a undefined percentage chance of getting ancient spores. Hold on a second. If I do like this, nope, still no dicey. Eh? All of the other drops here have like a 5% chance apart from the, uh, the pebbles. So maybe this is also 5% chance, but like it could also be a 1% chance, which is maybe why it's proving a little bit more, uh, more tricky to find, but uh, it does mean we are gonna have to get yet more dirt here because we do need to get that ancient spore before we can progress. Uh, I will also claim the uh, rewards here for this quest. Uh, most of the rewards in the pack don't have, uh, sorry, most of the quests in the pack don't have rewards. Uh, they do mention that over in here somewhere. Not every quest has rewards. Uh, the quests are only to help you a bit, um, but uh, occasionally quests such as this one right here do give you a little bit of a head start with uh, some poppies, some dandelions, and uh, of course a guidebook for getting started with the uh, the B resources mod called Fifty Shades of B, which uh, we will definitely be taking a look at later on down the line. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get some more dirt, shall we? Someone does make a good point in that we can also use worms to get dirt. As I mentioned before, worm, uh, string does work, but worms do also work as well. Uh, much like string, I think worms also have, yeah, a 40 out of a thousand. So uh, instead of taking eight, it's gonna take maybe like 17, 18 worms here to get uh, one piece of dirt. But uh, given that we do have so many of them, we might as well Go ahead and use them. So once again, a good deal of time later, our lava is now done and we have 24 dirt. So uh, even if there's a 1% chance here, I'm still hoping that we do get at least one ancient spore. We still did not get a single ancient spore, which is less than ideal. Of course, if it is a 1% chance, we have not yet sifted 100 dirt. So the odds are not yet in our favor, which is less than ideal. Um, however, it does mean we are gonna have to get yet more dirt if we're gonna make this happen. However, before we do that, uh, we do, of course, have this wooden crucible here that is now full of lava. And so what we can do is we can look at making a cobblestone generator. Now, the traditional cobblestone generator looks a little something like this. And the reason that they've made it out of crafting tables is, of course, that crafting tables uh, do not burn. And so uh, you can, oh, they, they sit on fire, but they don't, like, disappear. And so uh, this will never, you know, break. Whereas if you tried to make it out of the wood that we currently have access to, uh, that would, of course, burn and disappear and, and be very bad very quickly. Now, while this does work, I did see a slightly more compelling cobblestone generator that can produce much more cobblestone at a time, especially because we can utilize FTB Ultimine to mine multiple pieces of cobblestone at once. So the idea behind this cobblestone generator that we're going to build is trying to get as many pieces of cobblestone out of the one piece of lava at once. So I am gonna use crafting tables here and we're going to need quite a few of them. Thankfully, we have many, many stacks of planks here. And so getting a stack of crafting tables is gonna be nice and easy. And then at that point, let's quickly sleep. And I think we'll build the cobblestone generator back just behind the uh, the unlimited water source here. We do need to be careful because the while the clay bucket here can move water as many times as we like, if you move lava with the clay bucket, once you place the lava down, the bucket will break. So you won't get it back. We can, of course, make another clay bucket with the clay that we have here. It's a fairly easy craft. I think it's just three clay in the bucket shape, but ideally uh, we want to use you know this bucket as efficiently as possible. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to have some crafting tables, as you might expect. And then I'm going to use oak wood planks here in place of where in the future we're going to have cobblestone. So this is the general idea 
every oak plank here is going to become cobblestone. We're going to have lava in the middle. We're going to have water in the corners. And then when we break the cobblestone, the water is going to spill, touch the lava, produce cobblestone. And we can do that over and over and over again. Now, thankfully, we do have uh, quark installed. And so uh, if you look at the block and you go just beneath it, you'll see these little brackets appear either side of the, uh, the crosshair in the middle there. And so you can right click to build a block underneath of another block, which is super useful, especially in a skyblock scenario. And essentially we're going to do something like this. And then we're going to use our clear bucket here to move the water like so. And for now, we'll just let that water fall into the void. You could, for example, put down uh, some kind of block underneath there. You don't want to put a block here. Otherwise the water will flow forward and uh, will turn the lava into obsidian, not what you want. Much like with a regular cobblestone generator, uh, the water does need to flow a little bit, which is why there's a, a crafting table right at the bottom here. But essentially, if we do the same in each of the four corners, and then in the middle here, we're going to have lava. So once again, I will do something like this to bring crafting tables to the middle. Of course, this wood is going to burn here, but what we should be able to do is we should be able to put lava in the middle. That lava should then flow into all of these four blocks that would then turn these blocks here into cobblestone because it's touching water. That's the plan. So we should be able to get rid of the oak planks. The water shouldn't move. It doesn't, perfect. That's exactly what we want. What we then want to do, and let me just check that I've done this correctly. I think I have. Uh, for symmetry's sake, we can get rid of this one right here. We don't need it. But I think that this should work. That was a bit of a risky jump, but uh, if we take our lava and we place it down in the middle, we produce eight cobblestone. So now I'm gonna get rid of this crafting table and I'm gonna put down another crafting table like just beneath it here. So what we can do now is we can stand here and if for example, we take our wooden hammer, we can hold down our altar mine key and instead of mining uh, one cobblestone at a time at a normal cobblestone generator, we can get eight gravel every single time. Unless you lose it. But I think that's going to make getting large amounts of gravel, sand, and dust, which is what's required for uh, this quest down here, I think it's going to make that significantly easier. We'll do the same with a regular pickaxe here, because if we can get the cobblestone, that is going to allow us to make a cobblestone hammer, which is going to allow us to, uh, to break that even faster. So now we can do the same thing, but just more quickly, getting even more gravel. And then, as I mentioned at the start of the uh, the stream here, what we can also do is we can use our cobblestone to make a cobblestone wand. And then at that point, if we wanted to, we could, for example, take our gravel, put that down. Using the wand, we can build the gravel out nice and quickly, like so. And then using the hammer, we can FTB Ultimine the entire area all at once, turning it all into sand. And then if we wanted to, we could do the exact same thing again uh, to get a large amount of dust, which is probably worthwhile because I think we are going to need a, a fair bit of bone meal. Uh, and we do also need bone meal for this task here. It does say you can either build a mob farm or use a, a sieve. I think once you have access to a cobblestone generator, uh, sifting for bone meal is probably gonna be the easier way of going about it. So in this case, I will put down all the sand here. We'll use our wand once again. We'll break it all down with the hammer to get dust, and then we can sift the dust. And right now, I think gunpowder and bone meal are the only things we can get. Yeah, not particular high chances, but a one in five chance for bone meal there, so we would expect to get um, at least a couple of pieces here. Yeah, we've got eight in total there, which is pretty nice. And we also unlocked a new quest up here, uh, that being for flowers. Thankfully, uh, you do get those flowers for completing one of the earlier quests. I think it was the beehive quest. Yeah. So if you just grab those flowers out of the chest here, that is also that quest complete. And then from there, the next quest on is uh, floral fertilizer. This is going to open up the Batania quest line down here, which uh, of course starts with floral fertilizer as well. And uh, the way that we make the floral fertilizer is we take our yellow dye and our red dye and we craft that up like so with bone meal. Um, you don't have to use yellow and red dye. You could use all red dye. You could use all yellow dye, uh, but that does make floral fertilizer there. And that is that quest complete. We're probably not gonna do any Batania today, but we have now unlocked the Batania quest line and we do get the Alexica Batania here, which is the Batania guidebook, which will guide us through Batania going forward here. 
Back at the beginning, though, I think at this point, really, it's kind of just the uh, the ancient spores that we're after here. Some of the other quests that we can complete. There is a quest here to make a flint mesh. So uh, for those who are unfamiliar, you can put multiple different tiers of mesh into the sieve. Right now we have the, the basic tier, which is the string mesh. However, we do also have uh, the flint mesh, the iron mesh, the diamond mesh, and then uh, new to 1.16, I believe, there is the emerald mesh and the netherite mesh, uh, which I believe is the highest tier of mesh there. And different meshes will either give you uh, different drops uh, or a better chance of getting certain drops. So, uh, for example, if we look at, let's say, let's do dust. You'll see that with the string mesh, we only get bone meal and gunpowder. However, with the flint mesh, the drop chance for bone, uh, bone meal and gunpowder is the same, but we also get sky stone. Uh, if we get the iron mesh, we suddenly start getting things like glowstone, certain squats dust, blaze powder, and redstone. If we up it to diamond, we start getting fluix dust. And then if we take that one step further, it looks like these are the same. I would assume at this point, maybe we start getting higher drop chances. Or maybe not. Maybe there's no point in getting a netherite mesh for dust. But either way, the uh, the meshes are usually a good idea. The flint mesh is actually fairly easy for us to get. Uh, it's a string mesh with six flint. And of course, given that we do now have access to all of this uh, cobblestone here, that we can of course turn into gravel fairly easily. We can then craft the gravel, I believe, into flint. You can also sift the gravel if you wanted to into flint. However, the chance of getting gravel here is 25%, which means approximately you'd need four gravel for every one flint. So uh, it's definitely more gravel efficient to just craft it uh, as opposed to trying to uh, to sift it. Uh, so if we go and grab a new hammer, uh, we should be able to fairly easily get the uh, remaining gravel that we need. Craft that into flint. Again, we only need six for now. And then craft that flint with our string mesh. Now... Ideally, we do want to move on, I think, to the iron mesh as soon as possible. Um, however, iron really is the next big thing that we need, because outside of this uh, quest line down here to get to the buzzing doll, uh, we also have things like the dirt generator and the cobblestone generator. These are going to automatically generate dirt and cobblestone for us without us having to do things like mining over here uh, or using saplings over here. However, to get those generators, we do need real buckets. We need a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. And so... We are going to have to get at least six iron to make this happen. Uh, iron, we can get by sifting gravel, I believe. Again, if we check out the uh, gravel sifting in JI here, we'll see that uh, if we start sifting gravel in a flint mesh, we can get iron ore pieces. If you craft four iron ore pieces together, you get iron ore. And of course, from there, we can smelt that iron ore down into iron ingots. Uh, we can also craft that iron ore with a hammer. an ore crushing hammer, which does require a block and a block of iron and an iron ingot. But after you have that, you can then start duplicating your iron fairly easily. And then of course, smelting that, I assume to get uh, two iron ingots. Yes, that's probably the best way to go, but it does mean we are going to have to get a large amount of gravel and sift a large amount of gravel to get enough iron. So we have two and a half stacks of gravel here. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we get. We are kind of running out of um, space, but uh, let's do a quick, quick bit of sifting. That got us 14 iron ore pieces. So that kind of hopefully will give you a bit of an idea of how much gravel we do need to get here because uh, 14 iron ore pieces is only going to get us three iron ore. And that's really only half of what we need. If we want to get the crushing hammer, we're going to have to get uh, 10 iron uh, ore in total. If we want to get the two buckets, which I think is where we want to start, we're going to have to get at least six. So probably another two and a half stacks. Okay, so another two, almost three stacks of gravel later. Hopefully we're going to get enough iron here to make three more iron ore. Not quite. We have one, one shot, which is a little unfortunate, but this is going to get us up to... Oh, no, we do have enough. Here we go. If we combine the leftovers from the previous uh, craft here, and that is going to get us another bucket there. Now, uh, unfortunately, we are, of course, going to have to actually make some lava. Now, I mentioned earlier that I don't know if you're supposed to make lava in the wooden crucible. Uh, and the reason that I kind of stand by that is that I think it says right now at the bottom there, heat one. And if we look at 
the crucible in JEI, if you press uh, U on either of the crucibles, uh, you'll see that there is a, a heat source option. I'm assuming that if you, you'll see lava says 3x, whereas torches say 1x, I'm assuming that number there, heat 1, would change to heat 3 if you put it above lava. However, and it does say it for this crucible, like if we look here, um, it shows both crucibles and it shows 3x on lava, but I don't think it works. Like if I go and take this and I put it above our pre existing lava source, being extra careful not to put out the lava source, you'll see that it still says heat one. So let me get rid of this temporarily. Not a huge deal if we lose it. We can make another one. But uh, I'm kind of thinking let's see about making one of the other crucibles and see if that shows a heat three there. We do have the bone meal and we are able to make the clay fairly easily. We just need one more dust here. Which we can then of course put into one of these barrels with water. Uh, let's go and make those two iron buckets. Perfect. Uh, let's do one of those, one of these, and then we should be able to craft that down. And then if we craft seven bone meal with seven clay, we get seven porcelain clay. And then from there, we can make an unfired crucible. And if we smelt that up, we should get a fired crucible, which hopefully is going to allow us to make lava faster so that we can then use that lava to make uh, both a cobblestone generator and a dirt generator that we can leave running between streams so that hopefully when we come back for the next stream, we have a large amount of cobble and gravel ready to go. And I don't have to spend quite so much time manually mining cobble and cutting down endless amounts of trees to make large amounts of dirt. So there is that quest complete. Let's try putting this down above the lava over here. You'll see that one does say heat three. So this should be three times faster now. So let's grab this uh, gravel here. Let's put one, two, three, four cobblestone in there. And yeah, you'll see that's now doing three millibuckets at a time as opposed to one millibucket at a time. So thus being three times faster than, uh, than the previous one there. We are still gonna have to wait a minute though before this actually gets to, uh, to a bucket and before we can craft up the dirt and cobblestone generator. Again, I guess while we wait for that, we should probably look at getting more dirt so we can try and get these ancient spores. Because at that point, we should be able to almost finish this quest line here outside of the uh, the meshes. So our first bucket of lava is done here. Uh, we might as well go ahead and get the next bucket going because we are going to need two. So we'll throw another four cobblestone into there. Uh, over here, though, we should now be able to make a dirt generator, which is going to help tremendously. We do need one glass. So we are going to have to take one of our gravel here and quickly hammer that down into scent and of course quickly smelt that up into glass but once we have that uh, we should hopefully start generating dirt now i believe unfortunately that the dirt generator here from the ultimate skyblock resource generator mod does not auto eject the dirt that it makes so i think we are going to have to make something like a hopper to extract the dirt out of the pot if we want this to work and unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have anything um, like a wooden hopper. So we are going to have to get five iron. Um, although that does remind me um, something that we probably should have been doing all this time, Chan. I completely forgot about. Um, now that we have flint, what we can do and what is going to make our dirt generation a lot uh, easier is we can make flint shears. So if we take some of the flint that we got from sifting all that gravel, we should be able to do maybe not something like that. But let me check here real quick. Flint shears so if we combine sticks string and flint we can make flint shears quite a lot of them and then from there we can use our ultimine here to get a large number of leaves which we can then use to make significantly larger amounts of dirt because you get a lot more leaves with shears than you would saplings from the crook from the same tree if that makes sense so that's definitely something we should be doing if we're trying to get dirt the old-fashioned way Again, hopefully we can do it with the uh, the dirt generator that we're about to make, but I do think that, unfortunately, it's not going to work. At least not until we get some kind of hopper. Yeah, sometimes uh, some generators will like auto eject. This one, unfortunately, does not. We can see if we hold shift that there is dirt being generated in the dirt generator, but we do need a way of actually getting it out. Let's 
sift the 25 dirt that we do have because it's entirely possible uh, that we are going to get that one ancient spore from the 25 dirt we have here. I don't think the odds on dirt go up with a higher tier of mesh. Yeah, no, they're still basically the same, they're all 5%. So let's give this a go. Wait. Oh, there we go, it worked. Hey, we got three. <laughs> we didn't get any from like our first stack of dirt, but we got three from that 24 there, which is very nice indeed. So now what we can do is we can grab, I should have kept a piece of dirt actually, uh, because we need it now, but uh, we can take these leaves here. We can very quickly make uh, some more dirt and uh, we can place one piece of dirt down somewhere and use the, uh, the ancient spores to turn that piece of dirt into mycelium. And then from there, we can use the uh, the wooden barrel here to uh, to produce witch water. So let me go ahead. We'll grab our uh, stone axe. Uh, we did also make some stone crooks as well, which you can do with these uh, stone pebbles, which of course we get from uh, sifting dirt. They're just a bit more durable than the, uh, the regular crooks. But uh, let us go ahead and put this down. I'm just kind of thinking where I want to put it. For now, I'm going to put it um, I'm actually going to put it like, uh, I'm not going to do it there. I think the mycelium spreads <laughs> and we don't really have too much space. I'm actually going to put it here. We'll probably end up moving some of this stuff in the future. Thankfully, we do have more ancient spores, so we can, you know, relocate that mycelium in the future if we want. But uh, if we put the wooden barrel here and if we fill that with water, that should start to turn into witch water. And again, unlike previous versions of Ex Nihilo, it's now significantly faster to transform. Um, I also believe that unlike in previous versions of Ex Nihilo, you do have to have the mycelium directly beneath the wooden barrel. It used to be, it could just be kind of close by. I think now it does need to be directly below. But uh, either way, we do now have witch water. And so uh, if I pick that up, hopefully the quest will complete. Although I think in a bizarre way, the quest there wants a clay bucket. Which we can do. One, two, three... That gets us a clay bucket. We'll smelt that up. And I think if we pick the witch water up in a clay bucket, that might work. The uh, the icon here shows an iron bucket, but then when you click, the actual task shows a clay bucket. Oh, apparently just having a clay bucket, maybe maybe that does it. All right, that's fine. Uh, we also do need to have a clay bucket full of lava as well. So uh, we will sacrifice this clay bucket here to pick up that lava. That's going to complete this quest over here. Um, it also, unfortunately, looks like if we're going to complete the quest, we are going to have to also get a, uh, a clay bucket with water, which is interesting because I don't think you can use the clay bucket to make the cobblestone generator, although I guess I can test that real quick. If I type into cobble gen here, can I use that? No, it does have to be an uh, an iron bucket. So that is, uh, that is rather odd. Can I put this back in here? I can, cool. And at that point, we can, of course, grab our regular iron bucket and we should be able to make our cobblestone generator, which is going to work in the exact same way as the dirt generator, in that it's going to produce stone, uh, but we are going to have to get some kind of hopper or item pipe in order to be able to move that cobblestone out of the generator. Boom, and boom. So we have a cobblestone generator as well, which for now we'll throw down uh, right about here. So we want to be able to extract from both of those to produce both dirt and, uh, and gravel. Uh, we are going to have to make another bucket to do this and actually get the quest to tick over, but there's no real rush to do that because there's no rewards anyway. So a bunch of gravel sifting later, and we are basically here. Let me check the odds on the iron stiffened mesh. So and for, by that, I mean, let me check the, uh, the gravel odds on the iron stiffened mesh, because if we get more iron from a, gravel, uh, from a gravel stiffened mesh, I think we should probably upgrade that first. We do, yeah. So the odds go from being 10% per gravel uh, up to being... 15% per gravel plus an extra 10% uh, for a second drop on top of that. Um, and we also start getting things like uh, fluorite, emeralds, and diamonds. So I think even though it's going to mean we can't get our dirt or our cobblestone from our cobble generators just yet, I think it's definitely worth investing in an iron mesh before we invest in any of this stuff. Especially because if we're going to make this buzzing doll down here, we need a diamond. Yeah, the recipe here for the uh, the porcelain doll either requires an emerald, uh, either requires an emerald or a diamond, which we can get uh, from sifting gravel in that new iron stiffened mesh. So I think that is basically where we're going to wrap things up for today, chat. Next time we're going to come back 
we are hopefully going to have some iron. I'll do some more uh, cobblestone harvesting and gravel sifting between streams uh, to hopefully get uh, quite a bit more of all of these resources here. Um, and I'll spell up some iron as well. So hopefully we can get some hoppers to start getting more automatic dirt and automatic cobblestone out of these generators. And um, we'll also, of course, look at getting this buzzing doll down here, which is going to allow us to spawn our first bee. And then from there, we'll look at getting into uh, bee breeding and bee automation so that hopefully we can start getting uh, all of the combs and all of the honey and all of the resources from those bees uh, to power the rest of the mods in here. We'll also probably look at getting some storage drawers to help with all of the storage woods that we're currently facing. We have so much wood uh, and we're going to start getting a lot of uh, all of these other resources as well and then maybe we'll also look at a bit of immersive engineering uh, as well as something like uh, Britannia as well but for now I'm gonna take a quick three minute break and when I come back I'm gonna play some Raft with Nick.